Hey, and welcome back to another video from my eBay parts or repair playlist, the playlist of videos where I go on eBay, Macari and OfferUp and purchase broken electronic items and try and fix them on camera. And what I have for you here today is this. This is a Sony Ericsson M600i. Now, the M600i is a decently rare phone, especially in the US. There's not a lot of them around. Um, and uh, this one, I got it, I won it on an auction for like 20 bucks or something. You saw the price there, um, which is a decent price. It doesn't turn on, so that's the main reason I bought it, because we can do a repair video on it. Um, but I will get a full, fully working one later if I don't manage to fix this one. Uh, it's also missing its stylus. Uh, something I noticed with the M600i, if you look at this photo here, the M600i, <clears throat> look at the keyboard, it kind of looks like this one's keyboard. Now what is this? This is the Sony Ericsson Paris. The Sony Ericsson Paris um, is that prototype phone that I already uh, did a video on, which you can find up here. The keyboards on these things look really identical and they were probably developed at the same era. And uh, it's just the M600i was released, but the Paris wasn't. Uh, so I've done a full video on that. You can go check it out. You saw that earlier, the video is also on my channel. Also, before we jump right in, don't forget to smash that like button as always, as it helps this video get on YouTube's algorithm. And also hit that subscribe button down below and ring that bell notification button to get notified whenever I upload a new video. I'm on Instagram, Discord, and Twitter. And you can follow me, uh, follow me on those using the links down in the description below. And now let's get right into this uh, excellent packaging. Um, it was a top rated seller, so yeah uh this is a tiny phone so this is really good packaging for this phone damn this is good packaging i might reuse some of this stuff i've never seen this kind of packaging what is this like frayed paper i don't know uh okay so the phone is not that tiny i thought it was tiny all right uh let's get that out of the way that's the charger is that a knockoff charger let me see, uh, who's the manufacturer for this thing? Um, no, it's Aztec, as you see there. The, the charger that I bought for the prototype is also an Aztec charger, it says Aztec. If it's Sony Ericsson manufactured by Aztec, then it's, uh, it's original. Oh, I thought this thing was much smaller. Hmm, uh, so we got the uh, data cable. I don't have one of these, but this is in horrible condition. Yeah, it's frayed and it's, it's probably, it's old data cable, it's old. Not gonna use that. The charger is in better shape, but I already do have a charger for this thing. What is this caterpillar looking, wrap the, the twine like thing, whatever. Anyway, this is the phone. Uh, it does not have a camera as you see there. See, Sony Ericsson M2 uh, SD card slot. Um, power button pro and probably an IR uh, transmitter up there. Uh, the stylus is missing. The volume uh, roller is over here. And this is, I don't know what that button is. I'll tell you later. We got some microphones and we got the annoying uh, J CRT60 port. That's the Sony Ericsson CRT60 port. Comes with a battery. Let me see what sort of battery this thing is. Uh, it is a BST33 and covering all these IMEI numbers. There's Chinese writing there as well. This is this phone was probably released in China or something. There's this hook like, what is this? Let me put the battery back uh, together there. Oh, this thing must be for the uh, stylus. This uh, hook like thing is probably for the stylus. Uh, the stylus is not there, so. Yeah, it probably slides. It's a release mechanism for the slider, for the, for the stylus. Is this a refurb? Nah, it looks too old to be a refurb because a lot of Chinese branding in there. Nah, this is not a refurb. It's uh, the display and stuff. Uh, yeah, no, this is too way too old to be a refurb. Anyway, uh, let's plug this in and we'll see what happens. Let me get a charger going here. All right, I just remembered, I already have a fully charged BST33 battery here and let's uh, put this thing into, oh, it just vibrated. Uh, oh, so it works. It's got some dead pixels over there. Let me, okay, so this turned out to be not a repair video. Kind of a bummer, but uh, 
I mean, what can we do about those pixels? Nothing much, I guess. Uh, I guess this battery was completely fat, flat and it's not charging. It's a bit bloated as well. I was w looking forward to a good repair video, honestly. Um, what is this? Power menu? No, don't care. How do I... I want to fix those dead pixels. What is it doing? No, it turned off. Let me turn this thing back on again. Oh. Okay. It showed me a power menu of something like that. Let me <clears throat> have a closer look at what's going on. I have not used one of these things, so uh, I don't exactly know uh, much about them. Now, the Paris was a different phone. It ran uh, a version of Symbian. I don't know what this thing runs. This thing has no navigational keys. Is that a bit annoying? Well, it has a touch screen, but you know, it would have been nice to have like a navigational key like thing here. Um, but the touch screen is good. It's a resistive touch screen. Select power mode phone on. Okay. What is that supposed to do? And it's demo mode. Let's go into demo mode. Oh, it just needs a SIM card. It won't let me really do much on the demo mode. Let me throw it, throw in a SIM card and be right back. All right, so this thing, I had some time to play with it and it's running uh, Symbian UIQ. Now UIQ is uh, a version of Symbian that Sony Ericsson used also. Uh, recently, I showed you in this video, this uh, prototype lot of Motorola phones. This thing, the uh, Motorola Z12, the Motorola Riser Z12 prototype, this phone, which was never released to the public, also runs uh, Symbian UIQ. Uh, so it's a, a unique operating system based off Symbian. Well, it technically is Symbian, but uh, it's a version of Symbian. Now, this phone has an issue where uh, sometimes the screensaver you saw earlier crashes and the phone has to be restarted. That is just um, a software issue, I guess. I have no way to flash this thing um, as far as I know, um, but I had some time to play with it. Now, this button is actually the back button. This is a one hand use phone like that. Uh, this is the back button. This is the scroll button for you to scroll through the interface. This can be mapped to whatever you want and that's the M.2, uh, the M, uh, not M.2, oh, why would I say that? Uh, the M2 uh, SD uh, card expansion slot. Uh, that's a Sony M2 uh, SD card thingy. The same stuff you put in your PlayStation Portable. So yeah, this thing has to be restarted a couple of times. Uh, it does have a software issue. And also, if you see there, the uh, what I said was dead pixels, you can actually see through the dead pixels. And that means they're not dead pixels. They're somewhat discolored. And uh, when this thing heats up over time, that'll go away. It's, that is not a dead pixel. It's sort of a discolored uh, bunch of pixels there. That will go away after some time. So um, that is quite interesting to see. As you see, you can see right through it. The P and H, you can see right through it. Uh, this thing's boot up is a bit different bit different from other Sony uh, from uh, other uh, Nokia's and stuff that ran Symbian uh, I don't know if you can directly jump into the interface but you got to select whether you want uh, demo mode or the uh, standard boot that's kind of weird but whatever kind of a really interesting interface here uh, I've never used one of these things actually so we have menu over here now um, I'll save that button for last because sometimes it crashes the phone. So now you can scroll using this as you see there. You can put this into a list pattern uh, as a list and then it's easier to scroll using this. But as you can see, you can scroll. The, the wheel is a bit janky, so it's not going to scroll ideally, uh, but uh, it works. And this is the back button you can use to go back. Um, let's actually try this. Hope it doesn't crash the phone. Yeah, I think it crashed the phone again. No, it didn't do anything this time. Last time it crashed the phone, um, but whatever. Uh, I've ma I remapped it in settings, but it doesn't seem to have done anything. So um, there is no previous user's info on this. There's some contacts and one photo. That's about it. So I guess it wasn't really used as a uh, daily driver phone. I don't know. Um, 
and uh, this is the interface and we'll be doing a full review video on this phone uh, in the near future so hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for that uh, it's a really interesting phone um, the operating system and stuff and this thing is from 2006 by the way it looks a bit newer than 2006 honestly and there's your uh, screensaver and that thing crashes sometimes uh, so uh, that is uh, an issue that this thing has I don't know how to flash this I've never flashed such an older phone over the CR uh, 60 connector there uh, but as you can see you can use this to scroll as well there's a bunch of games on this as well we have the control panel uh, the stylus is missing and the stylus on this thing is very identical to the uh, stylus on the uh, prototype Sony Ericsson Paris. Now I said they, that the keys look identical on the, the things and yes they do look identical but the Paris is a bit newer than this phone. I forgot to mention, well not a bit newer, about a year and a half more newer than this phone honestly. Um, but the touchscreen on this thing like the Sony Ericsson Paris is a resistive touchscreen however you don't need to put too much pressure you just need to click it slightly which is really really good it's high quality resistive touchscreen uh, see I don't really put that much pressure I use the pad of my thumb or my uh, finger I do not put that much pressure let me bring it closer there you go I didn't put that much pressure some other phones you can have to like press it really hard for it to select but this just a light tap is enough. So it is a resistive touchscreen, but it's a very satisfying resistive touchscreen, a very high quality. And this phone was a premium phone by Sony Ericsson at the time. So I can imagine. Uh, one of the downsides this phone had was I didn't have a camera um, and um, that was one bummer. And then it had this proprietary Sony uh, M2 uh, SD expansion slot and then it had a CRT60 uh, connector. If you break your CRT60, uh, CRT you're screwed. There's no other way to charge this thing. And if uh, you imported this to a country where this thing is not natively sold, uh, you're in a big pile of trouble if any of the accessories break because uh, you're not going to be able to get uh, accessories in that said country. I knew a friend um, who imported a, uh, a Sony Ericsson Sartio just like me to win where I was living before um, and the Sartio was not sold natively there and for some time uh, he could not get a uh, CRT60 connector because um, it was just pretty rare back at the time for some countries to have uh, these accessories. I re took real care of my uh, CRT60 charger so it lasted, it's still there today. Um, but some people aren't that careful. Anyway, uh, we'll be doing a full uh, review on this thing eventually. Uh, this thing also takes a full-size SIM card slot. So let's turn it off now. And uh, so uh, to see that full review, don't forget to smash that like button down below and hit that bell notification button to get notified whenever I upload a new video. Uh, I'm on Instagram, Discord, and Twitter, and you can follow me on those using the links down in the description below. Thumbs up, and I'll see you guys in my next video.